I'm John. So I I direct and Drew produces and we co-write and you know, but it, it, within that, it's such a blurry line. Like Drew's there, you know, with me. You know, we're we're together at the monitors all the time. You know, there's there's sequences in the in the movie Drew shot that I wasn't even there for, um, and vice versa. I mean, there's you know every budget and scheduling and production meeting and financing. He's you know in lockstep. So there's a, you know mm-hmm. we're very much um, you know we sort of do both things <laughs> together all the time. Like we, we do, right? and what we don't, we check in with each other about. And as kids, you know, we went to Thailand with our family and we had two little sisters who, you know, the, the little girls are, are based off of. And, and Yeah, we had a, a, a big traveling family and we, we went all over the world. And like John said, we had two younger sisters that we kind of based the characters on, but we, we spent a lot of time in Asia and we'd have thoughts like, you know, what, what if something terrible happened? And what if, um, you know, what if we didn't, you know, our parents weren't here, or the embassy wasn't close or those kind of ideas we thought were really compelling because, you know, we travel, you know, people travel all over the world and you don't really know how safe you are a lot of the time. And um, we like the simplicity of the story of just, you know, when something happens that's, um, you know, when a situation happens that you don't know how to handle and you're in a foreign country and you don't know the language, it's really, um, I don't know, it creates such an obstacle. And this story was one that was very linear and that it just, it all happens in basically a day and a half. Um, and we just love the simplicity of it. In, I think it was 2008, 2007 seven, or 8? 2007. Uh, my dad and I went to Thailand to, to travel. And like two days before we got on the plane, you know, I read in the news there was a coup in Thailand and they'd overthrown the prime minister. And, and I called my dad. I was like, is this, you know, is this a problem? Should we cancel the trip? And he's like, oh, no, it's a peaceful coup. It's fine. And so we went and... There was this heightened militarization, and it just got me thinking of, like, what would I do if this wasn't a peaceful coup? What if this was a bad coup? And what if I happened to bring kids with me? And, and I, you know, I spent the whole time, like, I'd hide there, and then I'd jump across that, and then I'd do this, and, and I'd get to the embassy, and, you know, and, and I drove my dad crazy. And then, you know, as soon as I got back, I called Drew, and the two of us just started, started you know, beating, beating the story out. And no Escape is a... A husband, a wife, and their two little girls go to a, a Southeast Asian country for a job. And the day they arrive, a coup overthrows a government and starts killing you know, people in this hotel, uh, especially the ones that are associated with the, the new water plant in town. And so this, this mother and father, not knowing anyone in the country, not speaking the language, not knowing their way around, not knowing like what signs mean uh, have to find their way out of the country and keep their keep their children alive. We cast Owen Wilson in it, and I think, uh, you know, we knew Owen's a great actor. Everybody knows Owen's a great actor, but there's a, you know, when someone's known for comedy, I think there's a concern that um, if it's not just right, you know, maybe that on a, on a, you know, marketing level is a little bit of a challenge, which we thought was, you know, absolutely the, the, the reason to do this movie is to do it with Owen. He had a lot of fun doing this film as well. It's something that, you know, not the kind of movie he has, um, that he's done many times before. And being typically a com- comedy actor, I think, uh, you know, doing stunts and, um, you know, doing action stuff was really a blast for him. And it really showed in his performance because he was, he was having a ton of fun. Literally every day I'm seeing Owen Wilson do stuff I've never seen him do ever in a movie. And it was just day after day of, like, you know, he, I mean, he, like, it's funny, early on, you know, I think day three, he said, uh, like, oh, it's so nice not to have to, you know, try to be funny every day. Like, it's nice to just, you know, run and, like, do, like, physical things. And, you know, by the end of the shoot, he was, like, he had, a you know, a limp because his knee was hurt. Yeah, I mean, he was just so banged up. Like, he was like, oh, I can't wait to just go, like, talk in a movie, you know. And, uh, Lake Bell, she has such a natural quality. There, There's a real warmth to her performances and a real, uh, you know, like Owen, she seems like she's not acting, like she's actually just speaking like a normal person would speak. So they, they, both of them have a real non-actor kind of quality to them that, that we really respond to. And she's gorgeous and she's, she was amazing with the kids. Like she, you know, I, I credit her in large part with uh, the Dwyer's feeling like a real family. Mm-hmm. She showed up day one and, you know, we all, we, we, 
we went with the uh, Dwyer families to an elephant park and we fed elephants and stuff. And she had the girls on her lap and she, you know, she called them her little turkeys and, and uh, they really became like a family. We really saw this as an action film, but uh, we kept saying to the actors, this is a, a, a family drama masquerading as an action film, not an action film masquerading as a family drama. And, you know, for us, you know, we're the two oldest of six kids and, you know, we came from a big family and there was always kids around and the, the family dynamics informed so much of what was happening in any situation. And a lot of these little moments and stuff are taken from traveling with our little sisters or, or our little brothers or, you know, with each other. You know, Sterling definitely had more dialogue and she had, um, you know, in some ways is a little bit more of an adult actor, but Claire Gear is um, one of the smartest children yeah. I've ever met. And uh, she, you know, she had a couple of those key emotional moments that were very difficult as an actor. And so, you know, we going in, she was great in the auditions. And uh, but there's a couple of these moments like, is it going to feel real? Is this is this moment or are we going to have to cut around a little bit? And God, I mean, those those moments with Claire, you can really, you know, sit in a close up on one take for the whole scene. I mean, they were always they gave us such a tremendous amount of flexibility. Well, Pierce has that kind of rare charm. You can literally like he can say anything and it just makes you love him more. Like he has a couple lines in the movie that are so like that in any other actor's mouth would make you like just hate the character. And uh, with him, it just, you just can't help but love him. And uh, you know, we, we love Pierce. We've you know, been fans of Pierce's since, uh, since we were young. Like, you know, we just love you know, what he does. And, uh, but we wanted to see a really like ruddy, sort of like slovenly, like a different side of Pierce. You know, right before uh, coming to Thailand, he, he called and said, I just saw this documentary on Ginger Baker. He was the drummer for, uh, for uh, Cream. And uh, it's this documentary called Beware Mr. Baker. And he said, I want to base ham. Like, I want to do that. And, uh, and he showed up. And he, I mean, he was, he was like, you know, unshaven and sort of ruddy and like, you know, talking like a South London uh, with a South London accent. Yeah, this latest coup in Thailand officially started about three weeks after we wrapped pictures. So it had been brewing the whole time we were there. And, you know, thankfully we were up in Chiang Mai where it was a little bit quieter and in Bangkok is where most of the action was. But this thing was, you know, looming the whole time we were shooting there. And we were just, mm -hmm. you know, the previous coup, they shut down the airports and there was a curfew. And obviously those things would have really um, uh, been hard to get around for us. Yeah.